Hey guys, welcome to our beginner's guide tutorial on importing non-human characters and creatures into iClone. In this tutorial, we're going to be importing these two characters you see on the screen here, this nice friendly Kraken monster and the fearsome vicious cow that he's uh, facing off with right here. We're going to be importing both of those into iClone from FBX format along with their animations into uh, 3D Exchange. Now the first thing I want to do is explain the differences between the character types in iClone because this may cause some confusion. Now to start off we have our standard human characters. Now these include the G5 and G6 standard characters such as uh, Chuck and Heidi and uh, Mason and uh, Gwyn. And basically these characters uh, have rigs that are created by Reillusion. Uh, no matter how they, how they look, they are created on the Reillusion default character rigs. Like I mentioned the G5 and G6 standard characters. Now the next category is non-standard human characters. Now non-standard human characters tend to come from external developers and they're compatible with all of iClone's motion tools as well as iClone's entire motion library. However, they may or may not be compatible with facial motion tools. Uh, we have facial ready motion, uh, facial ready non-standard non human characters rather, and we have those that are not capable of facial animation. Uh, some have limited facial animations such as only eyeballs and, uh, and jaw bones and stuff like that. Whereas some have complete blend shape libraries, uh, some have complete facial bone sets, uh, it really depends. But they're all called non-standard human characters. That's your basic character that's compatible with most of the motion tools and may or may not be compatible with the facial animation tools. And the type of character we're importing in this tutorial are called non-human characters. Now these characters are normally not biped characters. They're normally quadrupeds or octopeds or they may not even have any legs and maybe just like a fish or something like that. These are non-human characters. And you can import these in as props or you can import them in as characters. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So let's go into 3D Exchange first. And let's go ahead and open our first uh, prop, which is the cow. So I'm going to go file and open in my FBX folder. We have this cow.fbx. Now this cow is just simply a cow model. I'm going to go ahead and open this and just press OK. And it's going to import in this FBX. And you can see there's our cow right there. Now if you want to reposition your cow um, on your scene, you can make sure you uh, load up the world axis here. And you can see that's where the cow will position wherever you click on, uh, wherever you click and drag it into iClone. You can uh, align that to the ground if you want. It'll just do something like this, and that'll align to the uh, world axis. And then you will want to press uh, Reset Transform, so your, your cow imports in that way. Sometimes you may have a character, uh, depending on what you're importing from, that may import, uh, you know, way over here on the edge of the screen. And then you'll want to adjust the, uh, you know, the transform and scale positions of that uh, of that non-human creature, non-human character, to align with the world axis so that, so that when you uh, import it into iClone, that's where it uh, imports and not somewhere over on the uh, left-hand side of the screen. And then you can also use the scale dummy as well. This is the uh, human size scale. So this guy's maybe a little bit short, either that or the cow's a little bit big. But uh, basically that's to uh, you know um, give you a reference uh, for the G5 standard characters, how, uh, how big they are compared to your model. So we can just take that off right there. You can also press Control D. So this cow is pretty much just an FBX model. Now let's go ahead and import in the cow's uh, FBX motions as well. I have those saved as separate files in the same directory. Now to do that, we'll go to the animation section here and go ahead and import. And then I'm going to import the cow eat, idle, idle chew, and walk.fbx. And I also have this cow annie.fbx. This includes basically all of those motions together in the same file. But I'm going to import them separately just for this case, just to show you the uh, possibilities. So I'm going to go ahead and open. I'm going to have to press OK uh, four times because we're importing in four motions. And then those motions uh, load up in the motion library here. You can double click them to uh, check them. There's our cow just idling along, uh, you know, wagging his ears back and forth. And then we have this cow uh, eat motion. Just double click on those to, uh, to check them out. But be sure before you export your character that you go back to a frame. Uh, in this case, it's frame one where your cow is in a neutral stance. So I don't want to import, I, want, I don't want to be, for example, at, uh, at whoops, the project size. I don't want to be, at, for example, at this frame here and import my cow. Uh, for example, if I went up to iClone import right now, he'd appear in iClone in this uh, pose, which we don't want. We want him to be in the neutral pose generally. So we'll go back to frame one. And uh, it doesn't matter which motion you're on, as long as your cow is in that uh, pose or your creature is in that pose, it doesn't have to be a cow. So let's go ahead, I'm going to select add all of these to the perform. And that means when I right click on my character in iClone, it's going to have a perform menu and I'm going to be able to easily apply these from the perform menu. And I'll show you what I mean in just a sec. 
So that's pretty much all we have to do in this case. We've loaded up that cow with the perform motions. We've tested those out and they work fine. Let's just go ahead and you just go to the top here. You can see that the type of uh, character is called prop. You can change the name to, uh, you know, to something other than root node. Now to do that, you'll have to go over here to your uh, scene tree and select the root node. Just press the F2 uh, key right there and you can just type in uh, cow, cow dude. I don't know why I put dude, but uh, there's cow dude. And let's go up to here and export to iClone. So control E, you can also do that as well. We're going to export to iClone 6. We want to export the geometry. We'll call this geometry uh, cow. We'll call the character cow. And the match texture size is fine. We want to uh, make sure that we ex uh, export it to our default uh, folder. So let's export to our custom props folder. I'll show you that in just a sec. And let's select export animation as well. And just press OK. And that's a quick export right there. So let's alt tab over back to uh, icon here. We're going to start a new project just to keep things simple here. And let's go ahead and find our cow. So we're going to go to our props folder here. And we have our custom tab and in the props right here we have cow so let's just go ahead and click that cow and you can see it's not called cow dude because that's what it's going to be called in the timeline if i press f3 and go into the timeline and i select uh, object related tracks here cow dude there it is it's just a better name than uh, root node so you can name your uh, object that way as well uh, by pressing f2 in the uh, scene tree in 3d exchange so here's our cow and if we right click on this cow, we have a perform menu. We can select cow eat. And there's our cow eating. Um, just, just chowing down on the gray floor of our scene. So that's basically it for your prop import. And, uh, there's not going to be anything else included in that. That's just the cow in your custom props folder. So let's go ahead and import in our next object. It's going to be our next uh, non-human character rather. It's going to be significantly larger. So we're going to go back to 3D exchange now. And I'm going to go File and New. And let's go File and Open. And I want to select my Kraken.fbx. Now this model here includes the mesh as well as the animations. I'm going to select Import Animation because this comes with FBX animations embedded. And I'll just press OK. And it's going to import in my model along with my animations. And this one's a little bit bigger. So it's going to be, uh, you can see it's significantly larger than the cow. Uh, as a, as any self-respecting kraken would be, uh, we don't want cow-sized krakens running around. They wouldn't be scary at all. So here we have the world axis, and if we use the dummy, you can see the dummy right there. That's the size of a human compared to this kraken. So he's significantly larger uh, than the uh, than poor old Chuck. Now this uh, this kraken also comes from uh, one of our developers, Protofactor, as well. Um, this one is currently in FBX format, and so if I go over here to the right hand side, you can see that my uh, perform editor uh, menu has already been filled because I've imported this character with the perform motions uh, in embedded in the FBX uh, file. So we can go over here and we can, uh, you know, change the root node name to like a Kraken dude. Kraken dude. And uh, we can test out the motions as well. So this, you know, um, he has double claw attack or something like that. So some pretty crazy looking attacks and those are some freaky looking uh, tentacles going all about and stuff like that. And you can mess around with all of those motions as well and you can add individual ones as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select convert to non-human. And this is going to be a little bit different than the uh, prop character. So let's go ahead and uh, here it comes up with this box that asks you to uh, choose a bone axis and change a bounding size. We don't have to worry about that right now. I'm uh, just kind of showing you where all the bones are and the bounding size. We don't, it's not really important right now. We'll just press OK. We can talk about that in a separate tutorial. And now basically our character, for all means and purposes, is a non-human character, which we can import into iClone. So let's go ahead and do that. Select Export, Control e And you can see the box that comes up or the window that comes up is a little bit different. We're going to call this Kraken. Um, we want to have the same destination as default. You want to make sure you select Export Animation default and export iMotion. Now if you select export iMotion, that's going to export the motions to your custom iMotion library. And I'll show you that in just a second. So let's go ahead and click OK on this. And our Kraken will export into oh. iClone. So let's go back to uh, iClone here. We have our cow just hanging out. And let's go to our avatar uh, section now. And in the custom tab right here, uh, right here, we have under avatar, we have Kraken. So let's go ahead and import that guy in. Double click the Kraken and boom, he suddenly just overshadows the cow. The cow doesn't seem to uh, care really. He's overshadowed by this monster. But cows are cool, so they don't really mind. Uh, let's go ahead and on this Kraken then, we can right click it 
we can select perform and you can see the Kraken has a number of motions that we included uh, that were included with the FBX file. We have this walk, you know, kind of a creepy looking walk where he um, swings his tentacles around. Really unnerving. Um, so in addition to those uh, motions from the perform menu uh, for the Kraken, you can also go to the motion section right here. And in our custom motion, uh, we have a folder called Kraken. And, you know, we can apply those motions here. We can apply the death to that Kraken. And he'll just fall on the, on the cow. So our poor cow just got crushed there. And so that's really all there is to it for importing uh, non-human characters into iClone. Um, and again, when you animate these characters, they're going to be a little bit different as well. So say, for example, I wanted to, uh, you know, have one of these uh, Kraken's tentacles up here, uh, or rather lift up. I can go to our motion uh, section right here, and you can see we only have the one option for edit motion layer. So this is going to display all the bones on our Kraken. So if I take this, uh, you know, tentacle here, let's zoom in a little bit so we can actually click it here. There we go. And we decide to, you know, rotate this. That'll rotate up his entire um, tentacle right there. We can move that around and, uh, you know, select his uh, head bone as well. And the hierarchy is here. We can, you know, move his head up like that. He's still a little bit awake. And that's pretty much how you, the only way you can animate uh, the non-human characters. They're not compatible, obviously, with uh, the real-time uh, body puppet motion or anything like that. Uh, so you can do keyframe animation using uh, the edit motion layer tool. And for the cow, let's go back to before the cow got crushed. Uh, if we select the cow, he, you can use a prop puppet for the cow. Um, so you can, you know, uh, puppet him around with a uh, prop puppet tool. So if I go, you know, prop puppet and preview, I can, you know, do something like that. I don't know why you'd want to do that. But the cool thing you can do with props is you can actually make them, you know, um, compatible with physics. So if we take this cow, for example, and we assign it uh, some active physics, go to our physics tab, activate physics. We can assign this as a static physics state, which pretty means it, uh, pretty much means it'll be unmovable. And then select the bounding type of a convex hull. And we'll just see exactly how strong this cow is. We can take some uh, props. Uh, let's take some 3D blocks here. Maybe a couple of uh, big spheres. And uh, if I bring that above his head and assign some physics to that sphere and give it a dynamic state, and a sphere bounding box. If you're not familiar with physics, don't worry about that. We'll have a beginner's uh, physics tutorial as well. I'm just kind of doing this to show you that when you import them as props, they can be uh, active with physics. They can be given physics properties. So if we, you know, play back, you can see there that one lands directly on the cow. You want to move it over here a little bit um, since the bounding box is not completely accurate. There we go. So this cow is indestructible. The balls bounce off him, but unfortunately, he's not immune to the falling giant. And again, in addition to the uh, to the uh, you know assigning the physics state, you can animate this cow uh, as well using the bones. So you can go to Edit Animation Layer, and you can select the bones here. Uh, any prop can be animated with bones as well. So if I select you know his leg, I can rotate that using the E hotkey, give him a sassy cow pose, for example. There you go. That looks a lot better right there. All right, so you can animate these guys with keyframes as well, uh, regardless of whether or not they're props, and you can uh, assign physics states to them as well. So that's pretty much it for uh, importing your non-human characters into iClone. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and stay tuned for our other Beginner's Guide tutorials as well.